first of all thank you the conveners and uh, chairperson i think i feel little intimidated because i am a odd man out in the wall spine gang but let me defend myself first of all i must congratulate uh, my predecessor and professor goregaukar because he has already given you the answer you know if there is a gross deformity what to address first so my my job is very simple so we'll i think nowadays we are in the evidence based medicine ebm all the patients are on the google i think at least in all the metros one of their relation is abroad so everybody is searching, searching the google and everybody is searching the net and the current available literature so what to do first tkr or decompression for the lcs which comes first so as he had said majority of our patients are like that we are living longer the age expectancy is increasing and degenerative changes are increasing so as you can say it's like a juice case for the arthroplasty surgeon on the left side and a very juicy case for the spine surgeon on the left on the right side so what to address first so let us have some uh, clarity or some uh, sort of consensus on that so in clinical scenario the practicing orthopedic surgeon he may not be a arthroplasty or a spine surgeon or both in uh, some some of the people they do both the surgeries is faced with a dilemma to address the first sort of what to address first grade 4 bone on bone disease or symptomatic lumbar spine disease unfortunately if you search the net and evidence based medicine not much research is being done and hardly any literature is available for guiding the surgeon on this dilemma very handful of few studies are available so let us see what which studies are available chang et al group from korea published in clinical orthopedics and related research they studied the incidence of lumbar spine degeneration clinical as well as radiological in patients with se severe osteoarthritis of the knee they concluded that about 51% of the patients with knee osteoarthritis had both clinical and radiological significant lumbar spine de de degeneration in 100% of their patients all of them they had radiological degeneration but 51% of them they had clinical as well as radiological degeneration this is the paper coexisting lumbar spondylosis in patients undergoing tka how common and how serious unfortunately this paper did not give a an answer what to what to address first it just throw it it just throw a question at the audience that such a thing is there and it needs further research another paper goodman et al published in journal of arthroplasty again topmost journal from america american association of hip and knee surgeons journal in their survey of knee society members and scoliosis research society members they did a survey of both the groups found that the presence of severe valgus deformity as professor goregaukar has already said and windswept deformity of the knee would drive the decision towards going for tka first so that was a that was a consensus opinion or a expert opinion this is the paper knee or spine surgery first a survey of treatment order for patients with concurrent degenerative knee and lumbar spine disorders you can see the conclusion for patients with concurrent degenerative knee and lumbar spine disorders the severity and type of knee deformity influence the preference of treatment order in both the specialties spine as well as arthroplasty surgeons severe valgus deformity and windswept deformity one side valgus one side valgus tended the decision or influenced the decision towards doing the knee first that is a that is the consensus opinion top society members of both the respected societies Ozaki he is a neurosurgeon means not a orthopedic surgeon a neurosurgeon by training he has published in journal of neurological sciences he showed that the surgical outcome following a decompression of the lumbar canal stenosis with knee osteoarthritis is poorer than the outcome of decompression of lumbar canal stenosis without knee osteoarthritis this is the paper in jns spine you see the conclusion the surgical outcomes of lss patients was with koa are favorable although there are poorer than the patients who have lss without koa so what they are cautioning hence pre operative koa status warrants consideration when planning lumbar spine surgery and estimating surgical outcome and basically counseling to the patient again this paper just fault short of recommending what to do first okay so i think we always as a arthroplasty surgeon we are always facing a dilemma our friends like dr satyan mehta there you know so what to do first whether to do knee first or whether to do the spine first so i looked at it 200 of my patients this is our published work 
Study of patients with bilateral knee osteoarthritis undergoing total knee replacement procedure with coexisting lumbar spondylosis symptoms published in Asian Spine Journal. There is a letter to the editor for this journal from some Korean guy and we have responded to that. So very soon that will get published for further clarifications. So what we found in our study, we found that 60% of our patients, that is 120 out of 200, they had clinically significant lumbar spine degeneration. Again, our study was in completely coherence with the Chang et al. study that almost 100% of our patients, they had radiological signs of lumbar spine degeneration, but 60% of the patients, they had uh, a clinically significant lumbar spine degeneration uh, warranting uh, uh, some, some sort of redressal of their back as well. So what we did, this is the... This is the grading which we have done, radiological grading, mild, moderate, severe, low back pain, we categorize the patients into low back pain, patients having radiating pain at rest, VAS score 0 to 3, 4 to 6, mild, moderate, severe, and radiating pain or activity. I'll take two more minutes. So after our, what were our results? After successful TKA, ODI for the lumbar spine significantly improved in 90% of these 120 patients. That is almost 108 out of 120 patients. 10% of our patients, their spine symptoms did not improve. And who were though this sort of cohort or a subgroup? The patients who had pre-existing radicular pain at rest and on activity. Any radiculopathy on rest and activity, their symptoms, they did not improve following a total knee replacement. So they required something to be done. What they got it done? So this is the pre-operative and post-operative score of the patients who improved, that is 108 patients. So the patients who did not improve, 12 out of 120. Uh, fortunately, we have expertise of spine surgeon as well as uh, uh, anesthetists who give selective nerve root blocks. And 10 out of these 12 patients, they improved. One patient was operated by one of our colleagues who is sitting here with spinal decompression, TLIF and instrumentation, patient was very happy and for some reason one patient declined the surgery. So this is the ODI, pre and post ODI of the patients who had radiculopathy on rest and on movement, we did not improve following a total knee replacement. So I think uh, the literature is quite clear. If there is a severe deformity, I means for a change, I think both the speakers, we agree with each other that if there is a severe deformity of the knee, then obviously you need to address the knee. And mild mechanical symptoms or mild radiculopathy symptoms, at least in our series, they did improve after a successful TKR operation. Uh, these are the references, Chang, then Goodman, uh, Ozaki from neurosurgery and our own reference. Again, I do accept that our study has limitation because the patients who are presenting to the knee clinic, obviously their knee symptoms are more going to be more. These are two confounding pathologies because patients are having maybe knee symptoms more, that's why they are coming to the joint clinic. People who have spine symptoms more with a knee osteoarthritis, they will be uh, going to the Dr. spine Lundi. surgeon. Uh, that's it.